actually believe that both of these, the collar and the switch ideas, are more practical and I think they could save lives. Not only in on at sea and on maritime vessels, but also on land and many other places as well. And the 34 people who died in the fire on board the diving boat vessel, the Conception, but they should not be so easily forgotten or lost on the backside of 2020. With all of the struggles of 2020, many may have indeed forgotten this incident that occurred on September 2nd, 2019, which I believe was on Labor Day. It involved the diving boat Conception, upon which 34 people died, and it burned just off the coast of California. They most likely died from smoke inhalation, carbon monoxide, before the flames were even detected. However, the circumstances troubled me throughout the year 2020 and even during the winter of the holiday season of 2019. Here is a little excerpt from something I wrote back in 2019 to help put this tragedy in the light that I feel it deserves. Although the circumstances were radically different, the tragedy of the diving boat Conception just off the coast of California on September 2nd, 2019, Labor Day, evokes another event which some here in the space city of Houston, Texas might remember. It was more than half a century ago in 1967 when the trapped Apollo 1 astronauts died on the launch pad in a tragic fire at Cape Canaveral, Florida. The spacecraft was pressurized and the astronauts were also in a confined structure. They were behind a small door, but their hatch on Apollo 1 only opened inward. I suspect there was a lot of finger pointing back then as well, but they also did a lot more than just a thorough investigation for the sake of closure. They took action and made real changes, even with shrinking, though probably bigger, budgets. The astronauts, Grissom, White, Chaffee, gave their lives for the space program, and they focused everyone on safety and better design. The Apollo 1 fire seemed to have inspired a work ethic as well. Putting a man on the moon might not have happened if not for them. Now, regardless of who's to blame or what happened in the boat that burned in California, we need to make sure, as Nassau once did, that lives were not lost in vain. Hopefully, these thoughts on this subject will be useful to someone in a more professional capacity, but maybe we could all consider emergency exits, basements, and enclosed spaces of any kind more carefully. Fire suppression, awareness, and early detection are critical. So at the very least, we might want to regularly check our detectors. And these two main ideas. First, I believe that all designers and architects should consider adding the feature of an egress collar to any and all vertical exits on both land and sea. This includes stairwells, subway exits, and areas near elevator doors, basement exits, etc. Now, I do not have a really good graphic or image of what egress hatch collars would look like, except for what I saw on a TV news report of a nuclear submarine um, back in November of 2019, I think. These apparent hatch collars may be more like what is probably called a shroud. They probably serve other purposes, such as to protect equipment, like from incoming splashes of water, or to prevent snags on the equipment as people go up and down the, the egress. The whole idea of the hatch collar would be to prevent direct airflow from the roof lines going out and in at the opening. A really good design might also prevent vortex flow as well like in an, something that's just an open stairwell. 
Anyway, managing the horizontal layers of the airspace is what is important. And that includes um, the horizontal layers inside the cabin itself, like if the vents are too low in relation to the upper roof an upper roof line it it can create you know incoming smoke can it, it could be a problem in that in those circumstances as well. These egress collars could fun would function much like a firewall and also a shield, which might be just enough to allow people to escape upward and through a hole that might otherwise be occupied by rising flames and smoke, concentrating where the it tends to concentrate the heat at the it, anytime you got a hole at the top and everything's rising going along the ceiling. You know we've all seen the demonstrations of. Uh, fire demonstrations where the heat travels along the heat and smoke travels along the ceiling very rapidly and it goes right to you know if you got a hole in the ceiling it's going to concentrate right there so anyways without an egress collar escape hatches quickly become an area more like a blowtorch when the flame is down below and rising and then the other idea second and for the opposite scenario, when the flames are above or outside any space, but especially small enclosed spaces with intake ventilation, they should be equipped with not merely a smoke detector, but also with detectors that function as both an alarm and a kill switch on the ventilation system. This would prevent much of the deadly gas from a fire on the outside or from above from being funneled into an occupied space. This is this seems like a no-brainer. They just seem to make sense. And I'm making a note of them here so that would-be designers or even designers and actual architects can consider this if they haven't already, some may have considered it, and, and the uh, kill switch on ventilation might already exist, but uh, it should be considered, if it does already exist, architects and engineers should be considering it, and uh, anyone who goes in an enclosed space, and I know that seems far, far removed from our present times when coronavirus has us all isolating away from each other and staying away from each other and nobody wants to congregate in a small space underneath a you know in a small vessel in the in some cabin somewhere with a bunch of people like it had happened on the uh, conception in California the circumstances seem unlikely at the in the current moment however time will come and we will return to small spaces Architects, engineers, designers could be preparing us as we all move forward. And it's just something worth thinking about, I think. And if I forget, maybe someone else will remember. You know, they're probably already, to some degree, doing it anyways. But, you know, people who dive and, and scuba dive and that sort of thing, they're going to be on boats again, you know if they're not already and so I think this is important for designers and engineers who are building the vessels of the future and the architectural structures of the future you know need to be thinking about it so if you're a young designer or anybody who you know thinks about these sort of things I just wanted this to be out there and on somebody's mind and uh, it's something to consider oh and one last thing before I forget, um, ventilation, 
the aspects of ventilation, whether it's the egress hatch collar or the um, ventilation fan switch, um, these aspects have something else in common with uh, coronavirus in the year 2020, and that is the fact that ventilation can be a major factor in the spread of uh, pathogens. And architects and engineers may want to give serious consideration to their future designs and plans. And uh, a couple of things that come to mind was how the pathogen was spread in uh, microclimates in restaurants and also Christmas tree costume most recently with a fan built into it that was acted as a super spreader. So uh, ventilation is an important factor, not only in uh, the consequences of uh, dealing with a fire and smoke and carbon monoxide and such, but uh, also with coronavirus as well. So we may want to keep that in mind as well.